Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first episode of my StarCraft 2 cat sting. Catching? Casting. Um, I have a game for you between Kyvex, who is spawning as the Red Protoss in the bottom left of this map. And uh, we have Painling spawning in the top right as the Blue Zerg. Kyvex, as we all know, is my... Or is the other person who runs this channel, uh, who's actually going for a Forge Fast Expand, I'm pretty sure, as that's what he does. There we go, the pylon does go down outside of his base. And uh, this beautiful Zerg, as you all know, or as you should know, actually you have no idea, how, no way of knowing this. If you're watching this after like having seen newer videos... Um, like, if this is a year from now and you're watching this back, then you should know that I'm a Zerg player and therefore love Zerg more. So I think the Zerg race is beautiful. I just, I just do. Anyway, uh, the Zerg, what I'm expecting is either a 14-14 or just a hatch first. Uh, except for a hatch first against a Forge Fast Expand, I'm not sure. Uh, what I do think we're going to see is just a uh, fast third, as that is a very, very normal thing to see in... Uh, in a ZVP. There we go. The hatchery or the spawning pool goes down on 14, and this drone actually moves out here to scout for a pylon. Uh, so that spawning pool is now down. And uh, yeah, we are going to wait and see what happens. We actually have the forge coming up here for Kyvex, so that forge fast expander will happen. And then he's going to go either Nexus or he's going to go Cannon, and then Nexus, um, or he's going to go Gateway, and then Nexus, and then Nexus, or Nexus, and then Gateway. Blah, blah, blah. Either way, there you go, the Nexus is going to go down. I think so. He is saving up for it, as you can see here. He is uh, just building one probe and building nothing apart from that. So uh, there we go. We will see that go down very shortly. All right, and the, um, the natural of this Zerg player was actually uh, denied by, uh, by Kyvex, who just used his probe to make sure that no hatchet could be placed there. So Paling moved it towards his third, uh, which honestly shouldn't be much of a problem, as uh, you know he was going to get that third anyway. Uh, he's going to get it soon anyway. So, yeah. all right, getaway going down for Kyvex as well as a photon cannon outside of his base. So the force fast expand is basically done, and uh, a queen coming up here for our beautiful Zerg Paling. Uh, so he is going to have that economic advantage of having a queen. And he's actually head in work account as well as he should be. This Nexus is almost finished. Um, after which we will see a small move of probes towards that natural. Uh, and the third or actually natural of um, Painling has also gone up. Okay, and this probe is just standing here just chilling out. He's probably going to play Cybernetic Score as soon as the gateway finishes. Um, there you go, the Cybernetic Score does go down, and the Nexus actually finishes. So we're going to see Chrono here on a Zealot that is going to be moving out, and we have these Lings moving towards the Zell Naga Watchtowers, as there are two Zell Naga Watchtowers on this map, um, so you can have a crap ton of vision if you do that well. And uh, yeah, we have the third up, which is now sort of mining. We have the natural up, and uh, we actually have more Lings coming out here for Mr. Painling. Uh, only four coming out. So no real big investment, but still an investment that he is making. And a queen is going to pop out here on the third as he uh, almost finishes two more queens. There we go. The queen finishes now on the main as the other queen of the that used to be on the main is moving down towards natural. And we have a couple of zerglings here. And uh, actually, what surprises me a tiny little bit is that we do not have any gases up yet. Um, I would normally see, at least in my lease, of course, I can only compare it to my links you would see at least a um, gas going up to get these speed links out instead of uh, zer just circlings uh, but he has chosen not to do that uh, I'm not sure if that's gonna bite him in the ass eventually but who does and uh, we actually see a stargate where is that piece of shit is the stargate here whoa where's the stargate oh where is he placed the stargate ladies and gentlemen I am actually clueless as to where that Stargate is. Oh, wow, I am blind. Stargate was actually placed here right beside the Nexus. Um, so we are going to see probably a Void Ray and a couple Phoenixes. Am I correct? 
don't know yet. He's not making anything from it yet. And uh, we actually see a couple more links here and a couple drones. That is probably just misrallied. I am expecting that to just be a misrally, and he's just going to move back with these drones because I don't really see a reason for him to put these drones here unless he's going to expand right in front of like a proxy hatch. No, I think those were just misrallied, and they are going to move back now. We actually do see a Roach Warren now coming up for the Zerg player as he does have two gases on his main and no other gases. So he is going to be able to produce some of them Roaches. And uh, the Void right now also almost finished for our Protoss player Kyvex. Uh, who will probably either make another Void Ray one uh, or he's there you go. And uh, then he's probably going to go into Phoenix production as you just do not want too many Void Rays out. As Void Rays are cool, they're definitely strong units. Um, but they are quite expensive as you see 250 minerals and 150 gas and also quite important three uh, supply which means that you just have to build more and more pylons much quicker and uh, we do actually see the four gate is now down for our protoss kyvex so he's going to go uh, for a four gate star gate build and uh, he will be moving out with shellots and uh two of these void rays a little bit um going for the attack now we do see a lot of roaches here like a crap ton of roaches uh so he should be able to hold this off quite easily but he does not have anything uh against these void rays except for queens and uh, we do actually see the evolution chamber or the ovulation chamber uh, as we so beautifully call it coming up and uh now kyvex is moving in towards the third of the zerg player the zerg player actually out of position completely so uh kyvex is actually gonna empty this base out and he might even get this gas he is probably gonna get this gas as these roaches are now moving back towards that third and now just indecisiveness from painling is gonna cost him this turn and um yeah kyvex now moving out and he does have this relatively big army and moving in with more units we do see three spore crawlers coming up for our zerg player and now this is going to come to an engagement between kyvex and painling here with these roaches moving out moving in moving out moving in moving out not upgraded of course and uh, these void rays just killing an overlord making sure that uh this zerg cannot build too many more units and uh, the army of kyvex is now moving back as Again, these roaches moving in a very weird way, and the Void Ray is actually scouting that. Um, Kyvex moving back towards his base, and these roaches might even catch some of these sellouts. There you go. Sellouts getting damage, and he is going to lose one, maybe two sellouts. But then they are back at the home base, and uh, he should not be able to do too much damage as these Void Rays are here. And uh, weird kind of force field going down here. Not exactly what we wanted to see from him, but I guess it helped. Ah, uh, the Cybernetics Core does go down, so no more uh, Psycore for Kyvex, who is now immediately rebuilding that. And uh, he should be able to kill these Roaches quite easily. I'm not sure what he's doing here. These Void Rays actually not being used. There we go. Now three Void Rays out together with this entire army. And he is going to kill some of these Roaches as these Roaches are forced to move back. And uh, Aspire coming up now for our Zerg player. So we will be seeing Mutas most likely. Uh, or corruptors to kill these void rays and then if he does go for corruptors of course he's going to go into brute lords uh, a little later and we actually see the third going up for our protoss kyvex right here who is doing quite well and actually these roaches now moving in towards the third i'm not sure if they're going to do too much damage but they do move in here and they are going to kill and actually the natural and that pylon both get cancelled and uh, the roaches not actually move out, having done the damage they have wanted to do. And uh, these Void Rays now moving back towards the third of the Zerg player here, who has no way of defending that except for using his Queens, which he might do. And he's actually... There you go. Now the Void Rays are slowly attacking this third. And the Queens are moving out here. Uh, but these Void Rays doing so much damage, now completely charged. And they should be able to actually kill these Queens quite easily and uh yeah i'm not sure how painling is gonna do that he is actually making 54 zerglings so he's gonna just probably go for an attack uh on the third of kyvex here kyvex now taking down this third with uh, his four void rays and i'm actually moving towards the natural here of painling um but he will see those four crawlers and move back 
most likely. All right, he is warping from all his warp gates. How many warp gates does he have right now? Are those seven warp gates? Yep, seven warp gates out for Kyvex, who is uh, who actually just destroyed one Mutalisk. Uh, Twelve more Mutalisks coming out, so that is quite a strong Mutalisk force uh, coming out for Painling here. And these Void Rays uh, are not upgraded, so the production of Void will, Rays will most likely stop when all those Mutas come out. We do see all these Zerglings here coming out for Painling, moving towards this third very shortly. And actually, these Mutas doing so much damage, killing all these Void Rays. And uh, these Void Rays do not have a chance to live on any longer. And uh, they did, he, yeah, Kyvex did kill a couple of these Mutas. And a couple more here, so 10 left. Oh, never mind. 13 left. There you go. That is quite a lot of Mutas here. And uh, he's now moving out with his Roaches, his Circlings, and his Mutas Swords at third. While Kyvex is actually moving forward a tiny little bit. So that might be a mistake as these Circlings are going to run into the third very shortly as these Roaches are going to hold on here. And uh, the Mutas are actually going to harass all at the same time. Kyvex here has to multitask a lot. And uh, these Circlings now destroying this third base while... These Mutas are harassing, and Kyvex here has to move into his third or into his main, and he chooses to move into his third and just lose a couple of production buildings here on his uh, on his main. He has been able to kill all these Roaches, and is now moving back with a couple of these Stalkers to kill these Mutalists, but these Mutalists have honestly done the damage they've wanted to do. And the Phoenix is now moving out, but those Phoenixes are, are going to get... Actually, they do not get killed, amazingly. And uh, they might even get, there you go, one Muta falls down. And uh, these Zerglings moving back together with these Mutas. But uh, these Mutas actually did quite a lot of damage, killing one of these, actually killing a Robo facility. Uh, yeah, which might have been a heavy hit for Kyvex here, who is now moving out with his entire army. Which is honestly quite big. And uh, he does actually have one Void right here scouting. I was going to say he still has that pylon, but he does not, quite obviously, as the fourth Actually, nope, the fourth thing going on. Never mind. I'm talking shit again. And uh, actually, we see these all these Mutas here moving out towards the third while Kyvex is attacking. So this Zerg or Kyvex actually might just go for a base trade. And I, Okay, now the Mutas are moving back as he does see this entire army coming up here. But this army of Kyvex is so big with so many Stalkers that I'm not sure how the Mutas are going to hold here. There we go. The Zerg is now moving in and uh, doing quite a lot of damage here as we see so many units getting killed. And uh, Kyvex doing a lot of damage here. These Mutas are falling quite easily. Zerglings uh, almost all died. And there we go. Painling leaves the game as he knows there is no way for him to win anymore. GG. And uh, thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any tips or any tricks for me for casting, then please let me know. I was JD, and I'll see you all next time.